Hmm. Surface finish. Surface texture. Surface topology. Surface roughness. What does it all mean? Let's find out. Welcome back to Star Rapid, where we're serving up a potent brew of serious engineering for serious engineers. Serious engineering. My name is Gordon Stiles, and that's actually how you say my name. And I'm the CEO of Star Rapid. I've been in engineering for over 30 years and run multiple companies working with prototyping and low volume manufacturing. And today we're going to get seriously superficial. I saw my spinning instructor wearing it and I was like, shut up, where do I get that? You get it? Nope. I told you they wouldn't get it. Anyway, we know that talking about surface finishes can be tricky and often leads to confusion. To make it a little easier for product developers and engineers to understand surface finishes and how to communicate about them, we'll start by defining some of the terms around this subject. First of all, what do we mean by surface finish? Surface finish is simply the condition in which you find the surface of a part at any point during the manufacturing process. This could be a primary finish, such as you'd get from a pair of rollers in a rolling mill, or it could be the finish you get after aluminium is extruded through a die, or the finish on a sand casting before any post-processing. Next, there are secondary surface finishes created during CNC milling, turning, grinding, sanding, lapping, or polishing. Each of these processes will impart its own characteristic finish to the surface leaving behind a fingerprint of sorts on the workpiece. Then there are the many flavors of tertiary finishes produced by other treatments. Examples here might be various chemical passivation techniques like anodizing or galvanizing, electroplating with chrome or nickel, or decorative surface coatings such as painting or powder coating. Surface finishes can also be transferred from one part to another. For example, when the machined core of an injection mold tool transfers CNC tool marks onto the inside of a molded plastic part, the plastic part would then have a surface finish that looks like it had been machined when in fact it wasn't. Is that clear? I hope so, because now things start to get really weird. Okay, how about surface texture? and surface topology. In general usage, the term surface finish is pretty much interchangeable with surface texture or surface topology. Topology literally means the way in which something is arranged. So in this case, it means the way in which material is arranged on the surface of a part. In most cases, texture and topology are talking about the same thing. But in engineering, we want to be like the cool kid who doesn't follow the rest of the gang. So there is a special usage of surface texture to describe one specific result. If a surface is bead blasted or if a piece of metal is spark eroded using EDM solid sink to make a spark finish, then you end up with a stippled surface finish just like this. Engineers in the prototyping and low volume industry often just call this incorrectly a textured finish. So that one is a bit confusing. What about surface roughness then? Surface roughness is a bit different. This is quantifiable using a numerical unit called RA or RA. It's derived from measurements made of the surface profile using one of several different techniques and types of instruments. Some of these are contact type using a very sensitive probe or stylus. Others are non-contact using optical light, lasers or even x-rays. In all cases, RA, not to be confused with RA, is a calculated average between peaks and valleys of the surface. Firstly, a mathematical filter is applied to lop off the very high and low numbers, which might indicate random aberrations that don't represent the true surface roughness. Secondly, to make sure that RA is accurate, multiple readings are taken so that the measuring instrument captures as much unique data as possible. In this graphic, you can see a cross-section of a surface. As mentioned, roughness is the average, and so this line will fluctuate over a given distance. Roughness spacing is the pitch of the grooves or their frequency. The lay is the dominant direction of the grooves. And then there's waviness. 
which is more like a periodic repeating distortion over a longer sampling length. So a low Ra value means little deviation or a very flat or smooth surface, while higher numbers are rougher. <laughs> Product developers need to know which Ra value they want so that they can communicate that to their manufacturer. But we must point out that it doesn't make sense to specify an arbitrarily low RA number just for the hell of it. The costs associated with making finer finishes go up exponentially as RA numbers get smaller. And this is regardless of the manufacturing process used. This also applies to production lead times. So only specify low RA values if it's absolutely necessary for your product application. Otherwise, you're just wasting time and money. At Star Rapid, our standard roughness for CNC machine parts is RA 3.2 microns, but we can do as fine as, for example, 0.2 microns on a CNC machine, but it might take 10 times longer and cost 10 times as much. So please try to stick to no finer than 3.2 microns unless you really need it. One final thing I would like to show you is this. This is a set of surface roughness samples. The cost will be anything from $100 up to about $350, depending upon the material they are made from. This set happens to be made of nickel, so it doesn't rust. I think that every manufacturing engineer who deals with CNC machining should have a set of these. You just look at your part and run your small pinky fingernail along the surface of the part and then find that similar look and feel in the sample set. This is a really quick and relatively reliable way of knowing if your supplier is achieving the general roughness you require. Okay, that's all for this episode. In a future video, we will go into even more detail on this fascinating subject, exploring the practical applications of surface textures and patterns. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and click that bell icon so you get the latest updates. And don't forget, we're the people that do serious engineering for serious engineers. Serious engineering. Side effects include becoming an Egyptian deity, achieving a sense of superiority for knowing the difference between the surface terminologies, and not quite understanding why nobody thinks you're cool.